Good morning to you on this Wednesday morning. We continue with Mark's Gospel, chapter 1, verses uh, 12 and 13 today. Immediately the Spirit impelled him to go out into the wilderness. And he was in the wilderness forty days, being tempted by Satan. And he was with the wild beasts, and the angels were ministering to him. As I said to you at, at the outset of Mark's Gospel, Mark is not interested in too many details. He just gives us an overview of what's happening. Uh, and here with the temptation of Jesus, he covers it in just two verses. If you want to get the fuller story, read Matthew's Gospel. Uh, Matthew chapter 4, verses 1 to 11, and you get a much more detailed uh, look into the temptation of Jesus. Mark uh, is not concerned, as I said, with the details. He's just concerned in giving us the overall picture. And that is why it's important that we read all of Scripture. That's why it's important we read all of the Gospels. We have four Gospel writers. Each one of them are telling the same story, but they put a different slant on it. They, they, they shine a different light upon it and give us different details. Mark's Gospel is purposely designed to be short and sweet and just to give us an overview. And then if you want to go into a bit more depth, then read Matthew and you'll see the similarities between Matthew and Mark. But Matthew pads it out a lot more and just builds it out a lot more and gives us a lot more detail. And, and again, Luke and John give us another different perspective. It's important that Jesus was tempted. Um, we see in the book of Hebrews that we have a high priest who understands, who uh, sympathizes with us, who empathizes with us, because he was tempted just like we are, but without sin. Jesus went through the same difficulties and problems that we experience, the same sort of temptations, but he was without sin. He relied totally and fully upon the Holy Spirit. He never gave in to the desires of the flesh. Every temptation he answered, it is written. He answered with the word of God. And so he is our example also of how we deal with temptation. When we are tempted, we can't rely upon our flesh or upon our own strength that we will uh, withstand the temptation because we won't. We need to rely upon the Holy Spirit. We need to rely upon the Word of God. With every temptation, Jesus answered, It is written, it is written, it is written. He relied upon the Word of God, and we need to do the same thing. It's important also to see the opening words here. Immediately the Spirit impelled him to go into the wilderness. Jesus didn't go there of his own accord. He went there because the Holy Spirit uh, told him to go there. And, and he spent 40 days and 40 nights fasting. And during that time, the, the devil was tempting him. And there were wild beasts in the area, but God protected him. He sent the angels to minister uh, to him and to look after him um, during and after the temptation. Now, we also have angels looking after us. God, they're invisible. We don't see them usually. But God sends his angels to minister to us as well. Uh, so <clears throat> we can be comforted in the fact to know that we are surrounded um, by God's angels we have power over temptation if we rely upon the Word of God and the Holy Spirit as Jesus did. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we bow our heads before you in the precious name of Jesus, your Son and our Lord. As we start this day, we want to thank you once again that you have given us a high priest. You have given us the Lord Jesus Christ, who was tempted just as we were, but never gave in, never sinned. And because he was sinless, he was able to shed his blood and pay our sin debt in full. So we are so grateful to you, Lord Jesus, that you overcame every temptation and you obeyed the Father. You were obedient unto death, even death on the cross. And now you've been exalted and given the name above every name. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we bow before the name of Jesus and we thank you for our Lord Jesus Christ. We thank you for salvation. We pray, Lord, for those souls that have not yet bowed the knee. We pray for those who do not know you yet, that today would be the day that would bow the knee. Today would be the day, Lord, that they turn to you. As your word directs, we pray for our government and the country we live in. We pray for all in authority, that we may live peaceably. Lord God, Heavenly Father, have mercy. Have mercy on the Ukraine. We pray, Lord, for an end to this terrible war. We pray for the president. We pray, Lord, that you would give him endurance and, and wisdom and, and just uh, protect him from all evil and help him to lead his country into victory against this evil power that has invaded them. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we pray for those who are suffering so much, who have lost everything. Have mercy. Have mercy, Lord. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we lift up before you the poor, the sick, the destitute, the orphaned. Lord, we pray for your mercy. We look out at a world that has fallen and broken, and we pray, Lord, have mercy. We look forward to the day when you shall return. Till that time, may our light shine brightly. May your light and your spirit flow through us, Lord. May we be examples and instruments of your peace and joy and love. 
We pray, Lord, for those who have any need whatsoever, knowing that you supply all of our needs according to your riches and glory. We ask, Lord, that you today would take each one of us by the hand and lead and guide us. Help us to live a life that honors you and brings glory to your name. So we surrender all to you. And now together we pray, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, the power and the glory, now and forever. Amen. So my friends, have a blessed day. God be with you. God willing, I'll see you all again tomorrow.